What's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Very special video right now. As you can see, we are right outside the Lodge Poker Club in Austin, Texas, and it's fun. It's special. We're playing on the 1-3 live stream. I think it's going to be a 1K max buy-in and also match the stack. So you know, Texas poker is always gonna get big. So we're ready. We're ready to roll, ready to play a big 1-3 game. In the next video or two, we're also gonna be playing the 5-5 live stream. So that will also be very big. I think on the last Mariona's vlogs, I think we saw like 10K, 12K, 15K stack. So we're also ready for that. So that'll be a big one. But for this video, playing 1-3, hopefully enjoy it. Uh, I just want to take some time to thank you for every single person that watches these videos. I know I plug a lot of merch. I ask you guys to like the videos a lot. But realistically, I think it's crazy that you guys allow me to have the opportunity to just be able to just travel and make videos and play poker and call it like my job. It's absolutely crazy. It's like exactly what I want to be doing. So thank you so much for the support. Every single one of you, specifically you, if you're watching this video right now, you don't even have to like the video. You don't have to do anything. Just a big thank you for supporting the channel and just watching the videos and thinking that these videos are at least entertaining enough to spend your time watching. Anyways, we're going to get in there and hop into the 1-3 game. Let's get into it. Here, starting things off hot with the first notable hand of the session. We are playing 1-3 with a $1,000 max buy-in and there's a $6 straddle in this hand. We get the plus two player to raise things up to $18. We get another caller. Another caller, welcome to Texas Poker, everybody. And the player to my right on the cutoff puts in that three bet to $95. We're sitting on the button with aces. What a dream spot with piles and piles of action and chips in front of us. We're gonna put in that four bet, but player to my right in the cutoff here, obviously you can see he's playing seven deuce. I've seen him play a pretty wide range so far, playing fairly aggressive and having him three bet over multiple players. I am praying for him having a strong hand of some sort, trying to find a way to get all the money in in the middle preflop or however it may be, because we're sitting about a thousand dollars deep. I obviously put in that four bet to 200 and $75 in this instance, thinking that it's a good sizing to either get him to call with some marginal hands and also obviously hear from his stronger holdings as well. Um, given the action, given everyone that's involved, everyone folds back to this cutoff player, TM, who thinks for a while, but uh, ultimately, um, obviously as you can see, he doesn't have the strong hand that we were looking for, but after seeing the seven deuce hand, as you can tell, we're definitely gonna try to get involved against his wire opening and three betting ranges. It's gonna be a wild and fun ride. Literally one hand after that, we pick up another one in ace jack off suit. We get a player in plus two to open things up to $30. Play my right TM, he puts in the call. And like I said, seeing how wide that this player to so my right is playing, definitely gonna be more aggressive in seeing this loose action in play. Definitely gonna put in that three bets. We're in position, ace jack off is, as you can see, ahead of a lot of hands and definitely ahead of king queen and ace 10. So I decided to size up to $125 given we're multi-way. Kind of want to isolate the field a little bit and hopefully maybe even take down the money pre-flop if they fold. So onto Dat, King Queen off, out of position. Uh, he decides on a fold and the player to my right TM makes the call. So for the second time here, going to be battling out to a flop. Going to a flop heads up here. Flop comes King 3, 6, Rainbow. Pretty much a total brick flop for us and obviously King High Boards should be hitting my three betting range more often than not. Um, he checks to me and I'm just gonna be C betting this almost at 100% frequency. Uh, I think Ace Jack is just gonna be a hand we're gonna be C betting, hoping to take it down on this flop when both of us whiff, like in this instance, but I don't think a huge sizing needs to be in order. So we bet $85 and he decides on a float. So definitely a little bit cautious if he has a king of some sort, but going to a turn which comes a jack. So in my head, obviously we turned a pair, feeling pretty decent about our hand, obviously afraid of valuing ourselves against the king. Don't think there are too many hands in this range that's gonna call flop and call turn without a whole lot of equity. So I decided to just paw control and check this one back. The river is now a queen of diamonds, Awful, awful card. Not only are we beat, obviously, in this instance, but there also are a ton of hands that we now lose to. Um, obviously, he 
backdoored his way into the nuts straight for Broadway, and he decides to bet a really large amount of $325. At this instance, um, pretty much with third pair, one pair, not feeling great about the situation, um, his really large bet sizing kind of indicates that he might have a really strong hand and it's really polarized to nuts or nothing. Given this situation and given just how weak our hand is, obviously just a bluff catcher, any one pair on this board is a bluff catcher at best, but we lose to a lot of hands, we lose to some queen jacks, we lose to 10 nines, we obviously lose to ace tens that can be in here. Um, some bluffs are few and far in between given the board texture, so it'd be pretty ambitious to put him on some sort of bluff, and given how little he has behind, I feel like if he was bluffing, he might as well just rip it all in anyways with like $200 left in stack. So I think about it for a while and uh, usually this is just like an easy snap fold against most players, but against him who's very capable bluffing, I thought about it for a while but obviously decided on a fold at the end. The very next shuffle, um, as you can see, trying to be very aggressive and targeting a wider range that TM is holding, we pick up pocket jacks and here in this next spot, he decides to open up the action and raise things up preflop and here given that we actually have a legitimate hand this time and once again, still trying to isolate, I put in the three bets and it's a little bit larger this time to $125. Decided to go just a hair over 4x even though we're in position. We like to isolate the field and get this heads up, which uh, surprisingly it does. Didn't expect him to be opening King Do suited, but like I said, definitely trying to isolate and he decides on a call preflop, so we're going to a flop. Heads up to a flop, it comes ace, 10, seven, rainbow. We're in position and here he checks to us and on ace high boards, obviously with pocket jacks, not great for our specific holding, but certainly good enough for our three betting range. So definitely gonna just start betting here and betting pretty small because I don't think we need to bet too big to get 10 X's to call and whatnot. So we decided to size to $80, just a hair under one third pot. Pretty standard as how I would play this with pretty much most of my holdings and trying to be balanced here in this instance. So after thinking things over for a little bit, TM decides on a call with the King Deuce of Hearts. Um, I guess you can say he has some backdoor heart draws, some backdoor straight draws, certainly can always get there. So we're going to see a turn. The turn comes, of course, a king. Why wouldn't it be a king here? Obviously, we're hating this turn as it's another card over a pair. I guess we do have a gutter to a straight, but with pocket jacks here, action's just gonna go check, check, and really hating the spot. Going to a river, which comes another ace. But once again, not really loving it, but uh, when he checks, I'm just gonna snap check it back, trying to take this one to showdown. He shows us obviously the King Deuce, the bad news, and we're not loving the situation. Can't beat him whatsoever so far early on in the session, and as you can see, we're trying to reload back up to 1,000 for the maximum. Following that hand here, it's not something that I'm typically too proud of. Uh, there's a little bit of tilt going on after, as you see, we didn't get action with the aces and we lose to ace jack and pocket jacks through a few suck outs. So I'm not the proudest moment here, but anyways, uh, there is a plus two player who opens to $20. Uh, the player to my right TM, once again, he makes the call for 20. And obviously with jack 10 off, I think I can fold this one a lot of the time. But given that the player my right called, I definitely want to get involved. We're in position of them, so trying to take advantage of that as much as possible. Anyways, the blinds call as well, and we're going five ways to a flop. The flop comes eight, nine, deuce, two clubs. And here, surprisingly, action checks to me. I'm closing out the action, and I think I can easily just check back and see a free card. Take advantage of being in position, and given that I don't think our bluff is going to work, given that we're up against four other players and ranges. But with open-ended, I don't even have the club draw as well. Uh, the board just really isn't good for me, uh, because if someone is on a club draw, then we have a few outs taken away. Regardless, though, a little bit tilted here, not playing my best, I decided to bet out $55. Uh, pretty ambitious here, thinking that it's going to get through, and immediately it does not get through. Zach on the small blind with a pair of eights decides on a call, and as you can see, uh, yeah, the big blind has top set, so I don't think he's going to go anywhere with his exact holding. He decides to put in a raise to $200, and action folds back to me. And yeah, like I said, kind of put myself in a pretty horrible situation. Because the flush draws out there, he can't have some flush draws. That kind of cancels out our straight draw outs. 
So ultimately, uh, I put myself in this situation. This is just totally my fault and certainly should have just checked back flop and see a free turn, but getting a little bit sticky, getting a little bit annoyed, I decided on a call for $145 more, hopefully suck out and get stacks in. Uh, when I make the call, small blind with a pair of eights is gonna get out of there. So we're going heads up to a turn. So we go to a turn, which comes a six, not the card we're looking to see, although a little bit more connected, still doesn't really matter too much. Um, obviously with top set here, I'm just way too far behind and it depends on the sizing that he was gonna bet if I wanted to call another street or not. But in this instance, he bets out 350 and it's just too large and we're gonna snap fold this one, not getting the right price to call. And yeah, this one uh, kind of punted away $150 to $200 here, but uh, tilt got to the best of us here a little bit. After that hand, we've been a little quiet for like maybe 30, 40 minutes or so, not getting too involved. And in this spot, looking down at the good old eight, six of diamonds, we get that to open up the action to $15 with Jack seven suited. Um, here in the cutoff, uh, I've seen a lot of loose play and wide play so far, so I decided to put in that 3-bet to 50. Very ambitious and pretty exploitative, but given that we're in position, we're on stream, let's splash it up just a little bit. Uh, we get the big blind to make the call, and Dat with the Jack-7 defend as well. So we're going three ways in the 3-bet pot to a flop. The flop here three ways comes 10-7 deuce to hearts. All things considered with a gutter ball and eight high, it's not the worst flop in the world. And given that we are up against two different players, I don't love just totally bluffing here, but at least we have a little bit of equity and I decided to just go for it, trying to take it down and bet out here. So I sized to $80 thinking that this is going to be at least like a feeler bet and see where things are. Nice to see the big blind fold his pocket fours pretty quickly. And now onto Dat, who does something that I didn't expect. He puts in a check raise and it's a small one to $180. At this point, I'm really confused as to what's going on given the small sizing. I assume that this is definitely for value here. And given the small sizing, it screams a little bit of weakness as well. So only $100 more, we do have a gutter, we can bluff on some runouts, I guess. We make the call and we're going to a turn. The turn is the six of spades. So interesting card as we do improve to a pair and improve in our equity. Don't think our hand is good here. Uh, I think he has a lot of 10X holdings that uh, are just gonna continue barreling. So putting him on that hand, he throws out a bet of $250. Like I said, now we have a pair. We have some two pair draws. We've got the gutter ball as well. I think we can bluff on heart runouts as well. So uh, I decided on just making the call here. The graphics are a little wrong with this $250 bet. He has more like six to $700 in stack from my perspective. So um, definitely a sizable amount and good enough to rip it all in if we were to brick out and want to bluff. So um, that's why I decided to call the 250 going to a river. The river is a five of spades, doesn't change anything for us. We still have a pair of sixes and hoping he checks it to us so we can just rip it all in and bluff it. And he does oblige with that, which is always nice. And now to me, we're thinking about it. A pair of sixes certainly has some showdown, but I don't think it's good enough to win at showdown too often. And I think we just have to go for it. Target his one pair holdings, 10 X's might have to fold sometimes unless it's like ace 10, but we do block eight, nine. So we can kind of use that to our advantage as well. So I think about it for a while. And ultimately I think uh, we just have to rip it all in. That's kind of the right play. So I announce all in hoping to get a fold. And after a little bit of thinking, he decides on a fold with his pair of sevens. It was nice to target the bottom end of his range and weaker one pair holdings on this board texture. If he had two pair or a good 10, probably would have had to find a call to my jam, but obviously very lucky and happy to get this bluff through and finally crawl out of the red and into the black. So for the last notable hand of this session, ha, it is a doozy. So strap in your seatbelts, everyone. We're playing one three six with a $6 straddle and we pick up king queen off suit in middle position here. Um, action folds to the player to my right TM who we've been battling it out earlier in the video and he decides on a raise to $20. On to me, King Queen off, like I said, I'm going to be three betting him relentlessly and I do so again, this time another 4X sizing to $80. We're in position, King Queen off can play pretty well against uh, his typically wide range. So I make it 80. 
a player on the button actually decides on a call to $80, which I thought was really interesting. And action back onto TM, who doesn't take too long before putting in raising chips. He decides on a four bet, an out of position four bet to $395. We started this hand with about $1,000 effective and given the button cold call of my three bet, I feel like TM is definitely gonna be more incentivized to four betting light in this spot, especially given he's out of position. And, and given from what we've seen so far, he certainly doesn't have to be doing this with a nutted hand. But now sitting with King Queen off, uh, we have one of two decisions to make. I think folding here is pretty standard. It's pretty normal and easily can be done given the pretty large four bet sizing. It's relatively weak and not really playable to see flops. So it's either a fold or a very ambitious five bet jam. And I go deep into the tank and I think I fold this against pretty much everyone else at this table. But against him, uh, I'm thinking about it. And I think he can be doing this with a lot of wheel aces. He can do this with pocket tens, pocket jacks. And if I think that we're flipping against a pocket pair and we have two overs, I'm more than willing to just flip for a thousand dollars given the action player and given the dynamics of the table so far. So I'm um, king queen off, man. I think about it for a while. I look at the other player's stacks. Like I said, we're playing about a thousand dollars effective. And we have one decision that I ultimately make and it is an all in for about a thousand dollars total the button easily makes the fold and we get a snap call for tm not what we wanted to see and you can see i'm laughing i'm not proud of it and yeah we see that we're dominated by ace king off suits so not great but at least we are going to a run out drawing very very slim Man, i think i stepped in something yeah, we'll he see here definitely stepped in it 10-7-5, rainbow. I imagine TM is going to run it once. Oh, there's oh, the queen, wow. Scotland. The queen oh, for a, Rampage. That's a big pot as well, 2.4. Oh, my goodness. The queen comes, Jeez. and TM. Two full stacks going at it, and a five-bet pot. Oh, TM gets three out hard on the turn. TM played it perfectly, got the call. And TM has exited Ramp stage right, and the Rampage fans in the chat are going wild. So we hit the miraculous turn with the queen, suck out city, and we feel pretty bad about it. And uh, yeah, that is all. You just get it in bad, you hope to suck out, and of course it comes feeling pretty dirty about this one. It was obviously the biggest pot of the night. It's always nice to scoop in those chips, but obviously feeling pretty gross about the fashion we did it. Big thank you to Rich and Scotland for the commentary on this live stream. It was a lot of fun and looking forward to the next video where we play 5-5. Five five. All right, so just wrapped up on the live stream. And all I can say is things went pretty well today on this stream. No complaints at all. Uh, got some bluffs to go through. Obviously the king queen hand, I've got nothing to say. Just living that luck box lifestyle. Uh, hit it in bad and suck out is the way to win some money. Um, end of the day, we played for, I think like, the stream was like three or four hours, give or take. And we were in for $2,000 or I got 2,000 chips. I was out for 3505. So pretty good profit there. Nice to come out with a dub from sucking out. Uh, so the next video, I think the next video, you'll we'll see the 5-5 five five game and it's gonna be big. Uh, I thought I saw stacks at like 10K, so I might be buying in for that much. It's gonna be a big one. Don't miss out on that one. So um, yeah, shout out to The Lodge for hosting this and having me here. It's been a lot of fun. Can't wait to see what happens in the next video in the next stream. It's gonna be big, it's gonna be deep. and hopefully a lot of entertainment for you guys so thanks so much for watching if you made it this far leave a like on this video it's always much appreciated it helps the channel grow a bunch and i'll see you guys next one Peace.